oh boy, everybody loves math, right? I loved math in high school. In this lesson, we're going to see how we can do different mathematical operations in ASP. Now, of course, if you're doing any kind of a business-related website, you're going to have to know how to do some basic math. And in this lesson, I'm going to show you how to do it. All right, here we are back in our script. Let's get rid of all this stuff here. Again. And let's type in my value equals 10. I've just created a variable, and I've assigned it the value 10. Now let's type in my value equals my value plus 20. And let's response dot write my value is, and then whatever the value of my value is. See that? Here's the text. The text says my value is, followed by a space, followed by the actual value in the variable my value. All right, which should, if I did everything right, come out to 30, right? 10, and then plus 20. Save that. And let's pop up our browser and refresh. There we go. My value is 30. Perfect. Let's make it a complete sentence. Let's come out here and put a period at the end, too, right? Just like that. Okay? See how you can put multiple items together on the same line? Now when I refresh it, there's my period. As a little side note here, when you make a change inside of your page, this is a front page feature, when you make a change, notice the little asterisk there next to the file name on the tab. That indicates that this page needs saving. And sometimes you might pull your hair out because, let's say I change this to 10, and I forget to save my work, but I go over to my browser and I hit refresh, and wait a minute, it's still coming up 30. What's going on? What's wrong? Well, if I come back here, I can see, oh, look. I didn't save my work. So now if I hit save, control S, now the asterisk goes away, and when I refresh the browser, it's fixed to 20. That's a front page feature, not an ASP feature, but I know most of my students who are taking my ASP classes also use front page, so I just wanted to point that out to you. All right, what about multiplication? Let's say my value equals my value times 5. All right, the asterisk is multiplication. So if I save that and take a look at it, I should get 50. There we go. Okay, there's also a subtraction, right? Minus 8, for example. I should get a 2. There we go, there's my 2. There's division. What about division? Let's make this even. Let's change this to a 2 here. And let's say... My value equals my value divided by 4. All right, division is a forward slash. All right, let's save that. Refresh. There we go, there's a 3. Okay, what if I divide this by 5? What do we get? Let's see what happens here. Now, well, there's 2.4. Okay. Now, ASP isn't as picky as some other languages when it comes to the types of variables that you're working with. For example, integers, long integers, floating point numbers, yes, they all exist, but ASP isn't as picky about you declaring them or what values go in your variables. We're going to talk a lot more about this in future lessons when we get into the nuts and bolts of exactly how variables work. But for now, if you have a couple of integers and you do some division, you end up with a floating point number, you'll be okay, generally. You'll be okay. Don't worry about that too much right now. Okay? What about our order of operations? My value equals my value plus 10 times 70. Okay? How's that going to come out? Let's see. Should that be okay? Let's just, just change this here back to, a, back to a 5, so it's easy. All right, let's see. 5 plus 10 should be 15 times... Actually, let's make this a 3, so it's easier to do in my head. All right, 15 times 3. Let's see what we get here. All right, refresh... And 35, is that right? 35, what happened here? Well, let's see here. 15 times 3, now that should be 45. Why is it coming out 35? Remember your order of operations, right? Multiplication goes first. So 10 times 3 gets evaluated first, that's 30, and then the 5 gets added to it. Okay? If you want what you're expecting here, you have to remember to put parentheses around things. Like that. Now you should get 5 plus 10, which is 15 times 3. Save it. 
refresh, now there's the 45. Okay, so don't forget about your order of operations. Okay, what about exponentiation? Let's see how that works. All right, my value equals my value to the second power. That's how you write that. That's a little caret symbol. On my keyboard, it's over the 6. All right, save it and preview it. There's 5 to the second power, 5 times 5, 25. Now, there are separate functions for integer division. Earlier, I showed you this one. Let's say if we've got um, my value equals 10, and I say my value equals my value divided by 3. All right, what happens there? Well, when I refresh this, I get 3.3 repeating. What if you want to chop that off? Well, integer division is simply a backward slash, a backslash. All right, save that, and I get just the 3. See that? Integer division says, do the division, but I only want the integer component. I don't want what's left. Okay? So in this particular case, you get the 3. If you want the remainder, the rest of it, use the modulus command. It's M-O-D. Right? Mod says, give me the remainder that's left over after the integer division. So in this particular case, I should get a 1, because 3 divided by 3 is 9 with 1 left over. That's modulus, M-O-D. Okay, and using those two things, you can determine both components of the division. Mod is very handy if you want things to happen in increments. For example, if you want to say every fifth record gets display in green, use the mod and say my value mod 5, if you're in the middle of a loop. Well, I'll show you how that works in a future lesson. Okay, so that's integer division and mod. You can also use the round function. Let's say you've got normal division. Right, my value equals my value divided by 3 the normal way. And that gives you 3.3333333. Let's say you want to round that off to two decimal places. Okay, there's a round function where you can then say my value equals round my value comma 2. Right, round that to two decimal places. And when I save that and reload it, there you go. See, 3.33, and it rounds it off.